you something to think about this evening. And I'm going to preach an unusual uh, message tonight that jumped out at me the other day, just in my regular reading. And I began to uh, think about it. And here's what I, I've got for you. I'm going to, I'm going to preach on a, a sermon from a spirit. A sermon from a spirit. Job chapter number four. And we'll look here uh, in verse one. And it said, then Eliphaz, the Temanite, answered and said. Now, hold your finger there. Eliphaz is one of Job's three friends that come to comfort him in all his misery and trouble. You know the story of Job. And I'll, I will say a lot about the introduction. It's a, a long introduction, very short sermon. Uh, so Eliphaz speaks to Job, and he begins to tell him, hey, you, you, you preached it, Job, but verse 3, and you've helped people, but now it come to you in verse 5, and you faint. And that means it's easy to preach and hard to practice when it hits you. And then he starts talking about whoever perished being innocent in verse 7, plowing so iniquity and wickedness, verse 8. And then I want you to look at verse 12. This is a strange scripture. This is some mighty strange stuff we're going to talk about right now. Chapter 4, verse 12. Everybody looking at it? Now a thing, this is Eliphaz talking to Job, was secretly brought to me, and mine ear received a little thereof. In thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men. Now stop right there. Hold your finger there. So you're going to sound asleep, real dead in the middle of the night, real sleepy, and something happens in his bedroom. I've had people ask me all forever, Brother Danny, the devil come in your room at night, an angel come in, mamma, uh, you know, what is that? Well, uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute, but he's, I, they say, have you, ever, have you ever woke up in the middle of the night and you felt like God was talking to you? Have you ever woke up in the middle of the night and you felt like the devil was talking to you? Have you ever felt, woke up in the middle of the night and you just froze and you couldn't move? That's a weird thing. They got a, they got a, Technical name for it, scientific name, uh, uh, some kind of sleep disorder or something like that. But I'm telling you, sometimes you can wake up in the middle of the night and you, uh, it seems like there's something else in the room. Have you ever had that happen to him? Raise your hand. Well, it actually happened to this man. But look what it said. This is weird. Fear came upon me, trembling, verse 14, which made all my bones to shake. I mean, he's a scared brother. He's a trembling. Then a spirit passed before my face, and the hair of my flesh stood up. <whistles> Suddenly that thing come across the front of his face like that, and made the hair on the back of his neck and his arm just stood up. I don't know if that's a figure of speech or that really happens. You know, people said, man, I so scared hair on the back of my neck. Does, does that really happen? I mean, I don't know. How do you know that? Have you stood and watched somebody's hair stand up on the back of their neck when they get scared? You dog. <laughs> now dogs do that. Uh, uh, but anyway, the man said it happened to him. He said, I was so scared, the hair, my hair and my flesh just stood up. Whoa, could not that be scary. Oh my goodness, terrified in the middle of the night. A spirit fight. Now Hollywood has been trying to imitate that all these years. All the movies of the, the teenage girl in the bed and she wakes up in the middle of the night and there's Freddie or somebody or whoever, uh, Jason or somebody walk out the room and she's terrified and scared. They're just trying to imitate the Bible. They just take them Bible stories and try to copy them to get, make money off of. But they're little cheap, counterfeit, wicked, low-down uh, imitation of the real thing. But he said this, verse 16, it stood still. It wasn't just because one commentator said it's just breath. Wind went through. Wind don't stand still. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice. So, so this spirit comes in his room at night, and he saw it before his face. And he goes, oh, my God, what in the world is that? And he said, I could... It's just like, just like a ghost in the movies. You could see, but you couldn't see the form of it. Like a fuzzy, 
sort of a form, I guess, like a head, shoulders, and body, but it wasn't clear, like, like a camera focusing in. It was fuzzy. What he said, all that stuff comes from the Bible. And it said, a voice said, and listen to this sermon that this spirit preached to Eliphaz. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? No. Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth. They are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regard. There's Hollywood, buddy. Doth not their excellency which is in them go away? Sure does. Sure does. Elvis, John Lennon, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, uh, they are all, all their excellency, it, it goes away. They die even without wisdom. Now, by way of introduction tonight, let me just talk to you a little bit about the book of Job. The Bible is a universal book. The Bible was not written just for one group of people in a certain age or time. The Bible relates to every generation, every age, every, every race, every ethnicity, ethnic, ethnic group, any age, all walks of life for 6,000 years. So there's no, uh, these people that say, well, the Bible's not scientific, it's because they're a nut. Uh, they, they think that the Bible, I mean, he could have put penicillin in the Bible back 2,000 years ago. Uh, so explain it to people, or people, relates to people in every age. So uh, this, the Bible's like that. The Bible is not a drop of truth in the ocean of truth, like they say. It's the ocean. It's the whole ocean. Uh, the Bible is. It's the truth and nothing but the truth. Now, the book of Job is one of the most unusual books in the whole Bible. As a matter of fact, the book of Job is absolutely a, a fascinating, fascinating uh, study on human nature. And if you want to get wisdom and ask God, learn how to go through hard times, you spend time in the book of Job. Read it slow. Read it slow. Now, the book of Job is for a man who thinks deep and feels deep about life. And uh, only the Psalms picture the heart cry of the soul. And the Proverbs, the wellspring of wisdom, like the book of Job does, the cry of the heart. As a matter of fact, let me tell you what some famous people have said about the book of Job. Victor Hugo, 1880, y'all. 1880. He said, the book of Job is perhaps the greatest masterpiece on the human mind. Philip Schott, the commentator, said... The book of Job is without predecessor or rival. He said it stands up there. They, they no other book com, compares, lives up to the book of Job. Thomas Carlyle said there is nothing written of equal literary merit. Now, some people like Proverbs. Some people like something. Oh, that's good. But for, for, a, um, for a, a literary man, a man that likes literature, the book of Job is way, way at the top. Dean Bradley said, it stands alone in the Bible and alone in the world of literature. Martin Luther said, the book of Job is magnificent and uh, sublime as no other book of Scripture. Uh, the book of Job is perhaps the oldest book in the entire world that really talks about life like it is. Now, there's a lot of debate. You can look it up in the world as usual always trying to make the Bible not as great as it is, try to degrade it a little bit. The book, uh, the, the world will talk about uh, Gilgamesh, you know, 2000 B.C. or the eloquent peasant in 1800 B.C. or the Book of the Dead and, um, and stuff like that that were in the time frame of the book of Job. But there is very good evidence from the Scripture that the book of Job is the oldest book written about man and life in the world, and the old, the first book of the Bible, written actually before the book of Genesis. And one reason people believe that is because in 42 chapters, there is not one reference to the law or, or the, uh, the, uh, the laws of God, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, Numbers. So it was written after the flood, but before Moses come along, and, and look at it, it's, it's, it's absolutely 
It's, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. All those other little books that I mentioned a while ago are literature, but none of them predict the future. None of them have scientific data in them, like the book of Job does, fingerprints, stuff like that. All of them lack a plot that ma makes a story, and none of them have an answer for the, one of the greatest questions in the world, and that is, why do good people suffer? Why do the righteous suffer? That's the first book of the Bible. That's one of the first questions of mankind is, here I'm trying to do the best I can, and look what happens. Everything blows up in our face. And so why do good people, why do bad things happen to good people? The book of Job answers that. Now, typology. The book of Job is a picture. You see Job all the way through there, the picture of Israel. You see a picture of Christ on the cross. You have suffering. You see a picture of a man in hell. And they say that every major doctrine in the Bible is one way or another presented some of those chapters in the book of Job. Now look at typology here just for a minute. The book of Job has 42 chapters. That, that, that corresponds with the 42 months of the Great Tribulation. Three and a half years. That's of every, one, one uh, chapter for every month. The book of Job, uh, therefore, is a picture of the Great Tribulation, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the book of Job is Job is on the ground. Seven days and seven nights. A picture of those seven years during the tribulation persecuted by Satan. That's a picture of the Israel, the Jews, being persecuted by the devil there during the tribulation period. The book of Job, as I said, has 42 chapters. Uh, Job is in Edom in Lamentations 4.21 where Israel will be during the great tribulation. At the end of the book of Job, that Job's stuff is restored. Uh, Job gets back everything he had lost, everything the devil took from him. He got it all back double. And that's a picture of the restoration of Israel at the end of the tribulation when God gives them back everything the devil sold them all. I mean, you can't, it, you can't miss it. It's just uh, right there in front of your face. Amen. It was written many, many, many hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago by Elihu. And you get that in Job 32, 2 and verse 6 to 15 and along in there. Now, the Bible said here that the Spirit passed by Eliphaz. In Hebrews 1, 4, the Bible said he maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So we know that angels are ministering spirits. I, I, look, I looked this up. And all these commentaries, all these great commentaries, you know, you got Matthew Henry and all them old, old time, Adam Clark and all those old time commentaries. And one of them, not them two, but one of them said that this was probably the devil uh, speaking to Eliphaz. I don't think so. I think that was an, it was an angel and God sent Eliphaz a message. You can tell by, you can tell by what he preached that it wasn't the devil. Uh, the devil don't preach like that. Uh, amen. The devil uh, don't preach like this. Can mortal man be just with God? And uh, I, I'll just tell you uh, nine things about mankind right here from this sermon from a spirit. There's nine things you need to know. And the title of this sermon might be from the angel to Eliphaz. Who do you think you are, dude? Uh, to Job. Are you more just than God? No. Or was you around when the foundation of the earth was laid? No. Who are you, are you talking off a of big for your britches, big boy? I mean, who? He, and the devil don't preach like that. Unlike the UFO occupants that NASA and the Congress have been talking about for the last two or three weeks on TV, uh, you're getting ready to see more and more and more of that. You know, we're being conditioned right now, little by little by little, to accept uh, the accept ET uh, when they finally get here. And I've said for 30 years, and people know me know I've said it, they ain't coming from up there, brother. They coming from down there. Them things come out of the water and out of holes in the earth somewhere. And the reason they can appear and disappear because a lot of them are spiritual. Some of them are not. The reason they crash is because, is because a spirit uh, abducted them cows and stuff and made some kind of body and them things are dumb them little greys uh, they're pretty dumb and uh, they make mistakes 
But them big, tall Nordic, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed big ones that are about nine foot tall, uh, they're much smarter. There's a different different thing where the devil is trying to make it all together. <laughs> I'd blow your mind. But them people don't preach this. You know, let me tell you what they preach. Unlike the UFO occupants who come in peace and they tell us that we should all be trying to love and accept one another and take care of the planet and gradually we'll become gods. No, 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 no. Unlike Norman Vincent Peale who tells us positive thinking is the way out of all of our problems and just think positive thoughts and your life will become better. Unlike Rick Warren who gives you a purpose of feel life and things can be better for you if you'll just uh, go to Saddleback or something and, and uh, live in California and have money and eat out a lot. Unlike uh, unlike uh, Joyce Meyer who's uh, trying to get you all you wives, your husbands to submit to you. Unlike uh, the Christian light rock music hip hop soccer mom stations who go to church once a week and sip wine on the weekends and they're wearing their shorts at the party and, 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 and hanging around and talking about the Laodicean backslid Christians of our day. Unlike them, this old boy lays it out there. And you can tell when a message from God because it sounds more like this. Here's what he said. He said, I don't know who you think you are, Job. But God don't put no trust in his servants. That shows the omniscience of God. God knows everything. You know how God don't put no trust in his servants? He put no trust in Adam. God knew that Adam was going to sin when he put him in that garden. God knew that Noah was going to get drunk when he got him through in the ark and preserved him through the flood. God knew that David would commit adultery when he put David on the throne and gave him the kingdom to run. God knew that. He put no trust in his servant. God knew that Jonah would run and wind up in the belly of the whale and, and have back, backslide. And then you're right, God knew it. God knew all of that. God knew that Peter would cuss and deny him when he called him to preach over there. God knew that Moses would lose his temper and get the kill the guy and all that. He puts no trust in his servant. Now look, people tonight. God don't bless us because we're some great something or another uh, that he's lucky to have. God blesses us because of his love and because of his mercy and because of his goodness. And I, for one tonight, I am thankful for his mercy. I'm thankful for his mercy. Woo! I'm thankful that God don't throw me in hell where I deserve tonight. Next time you start complaining, next time you start griping about how hard your life is, you better sit down and thank God you ain't getting what you really deserve. You ought to be in hell tonight frying like a piece of bacon. But here we are sitting here in a nice, beautiful, air-conditioned building. Some food in our belly, milkshake coming. Uh, good night, sleep, Lord willing. And hey, we ought to shout tonight. Here's what he said. He charged his angels with folly. Now, that's pretty telling, too. Uh, was that recent? So if this was after the flood, and God charged his angels with folly, then that's talking about them pre-Adamic angels. By the way, the only time the sons of God are mentioned in the Bible and the Old Testament outside of Genesis is Job. And in Job 38, it said the sons of God were there when the morning stars sang, the sons of God shouted for joy when God laid the foundation of the earth. That was before Adam and Eve were ever born, y'all. So the sons of God could not and are not and were not the godly sons of Seth. And the, like the Schofield Bible says, I hate to say it. I know them men think you're spooky when you tell say that. There's no other way, there's no other way to say it. Uh, uh, they say, well, the godly line. Of, let me tell you something, people. There ain't no such thing as a godly line. You check that line. They're about as ungodly as you can get. There's no such thing in the Bible as a godly line. There is a messianic line. Amen? There's a messianic line. Where they, they, but you know who's in that? Rahab. But she's not godly. Listen, people. They were not the godly sons of Seth. They were the special creation of God that were here before the, as the foundation of the world. And he charged them with folly. You know, I heard something the other day. I wish I could remember where I heard it at. There's so much stuff hit you nowadays, you can't even process all of it. And people send me stuff all the time. People from other states, they're like, oh, Brother Daniel, I thought you might like this. My brain popped, man, if I listen and studied out all the stuff people send me. So I don't. I, I ignore a lot of it. And uh, and uh, I was listening to somebody, and they said uh, that, that when Satan fell, that Satan fell, I don't know where this come from, but they said he had, they said he had 333 million angels 
go out with him. And I thought, well, where to get that? I don't know. But he said it had a third. So would there be a billion satanic angels? And there was a billion angels and 333 million of them went to the devil? I don't know. That's a weird thing, isn't it? I wonder where they come up with stuff like that. It's not in the Bible that I can find directly. But it said he charged his angels with folly. He said, look, I didn't let them angels get by with what they did. I put them that sin in chains of darkness to be judged one day. You're not going to fool me, Job. You're not going to pull the wool over my eyes. Look at the third point he made. He said, you're made out of clay, buddy. You're made out of who do you think you are? Who in the world do you think you are? That's what we are, y'all. It's proven scientifically, by the way, that we are nothing but clay and we are going back to dust. Prepare to meet God, big boy. Uh, your name is mud. That's right. Uh, that's what you're made out of. In Job 20 and verse 11, the Bible said his bones are full of the sin of his youth. Now listen, Pete. Listen. You, you, you hear people get on the internet. I talked about it Wednesday night in our Bible study. All these girls get on there. They're about 28 or 29. And they grew up. And they were exposed to some kind of church. A lot of them was raised Catholic. And they heard the commandments. And then they got out and lost virginity before they was 14. And then they started drinking and partying. And going from one boy to the other boy to the other boy to the other boy. And somebody told them they need to get right with God and get back in church. And they felt so guilty. And then they went to college and they heard a professor say, oh, well, the stories in the Bible ain't really true anyway. And, everything. They, and they brought out pick and choose portions of the Bible to make it look bad. And the Bible said you're supposed to kill your son if he rebelled. The Bible said you make it, you know, twist it around like that. Twist it around. And uh, they'll get on there and they'll say, I don't know, you Christians are crazy. You're ridiculous. You know, uh, Let me tell you something, ladies. I hope I hope you're listening. Somebody said, well, they'll tell the Huffington, tell the Huffington Post. I don't care. They've heard me preach before. Uh, they give me some good. Well, y'all remember that? Uh, I preached something up here one time on Wonder shows in that stupid cartoon, and I showed a video, and I said, had God committing suicide. Man, I was up there stomping and hollering, screaming, and running around, and I said, it's of the devil. And they put me on the Huffington Post and said, Pastor loses his mind over, over a cartoon. And I, I, I guess you can still find it. And, like, and I didn't even know it. Somebody called me, and they said, Brother Danny, you're on the Huffington Post. I said, what's that? And they said, it's a famous news organization. And I said, I, how they all know me? They're in California. Sure enough. And I told you the story about that. Remember that story I told you about that? This lady called me one day from up in New York or somewhere. She said, is this Danny Castle? And I said, it sure is. She said, uh, uh, I just want you to know, we, me and my friend have been listening to you preach. And I said, she said, I love, I love it. She said, well, you, you're our favorite preacher. I mean, something like, yeah, we love to hear it. And said, uh, uh, I want to send you some money. I said, well, okay. You send it to church. And and she said, okay, what's your address? And I give it to her. And I said, how do you even know about me? She said, well, a friend of mine said that they had a preacher on the Huffington Post and said, uh, we looked you up and said, we love it. And she sent us $500. I said, glory to God. Thank you, reprobate Huffington Post. Uh, God used you weirdos to send us $500. Appreciate that a lot. Uh, if you want to put this sermon on, help yourself. And, and, but anyway, uh, uh, listen, these people, these people, it's always bragging about we're this and we're that and we're the Grammys. And you come out here, uh, you talk about them and you, uh, I got something, I don't know what that was. I'm going to make fun of, here's my shoes I was talking about this morning. See my toe coming out? I think we need to take up an offering for the poor pastor that has holes in his shoe. If I had a, if I had a wife and family, that would be good to me. I'd have some few. Uh, but uh, serious, I got some coming. Don't feel sorry for me. I just like these. They feel good. Uh, but anyway, uh, what was I talking about? The um, Oh, yeah. You know these old weirdos they put up there and they come out like, like Taylor Swift. Bless her heart. I don't know nothing about Taylor Swift. Swift. I don't know none of her songs. I, not a one. I don't. Uh, but she getting wicked, man. Woo, she's getting wickeder and wickeder. And, and if what they're saying about her truth, she's in some wicked, devilish stuff. And it always happens. You can't go so far in the world and stop. You got to take the next step or they won't fool with you. It's a business. Little Britney Spears, cute as a button when she's about that high. 
and danced around. And I, oh, how sweet, how sweet. Then she got a little bit bigger and took more. A little bit bigger and took more. Now, poor kid can't even write a check. Unless that's changed. And can't even spend her own money. And you know what? Listen, people. The devil... The devil's got people out there saying, we're the greatest. Like old Paris Hilton. Remember old Paris Hilton 20 years ago? That's all everybody talked about. Where's she now? Lord, I don't know. She about 50 now and hides her. She don't come out in public. It don't last long. It don't last long. It don't last long, I'm telling you. I don't know who the most popular country singer or rock singer or rapper is right now. I don't. I'll try to catch up before camp so I can blast them. Uh, I, but, but listen. Listen, y'all, listen. It don't last. You know how I know the Bible's true? Because of what it says is happening. They're made out of clay. They blossom out. They deceive a bunch of people. They're beautiful. I mean, they are pretty or good, handsome. And go check with them 20 years later. They're an old hag up there in Hollywood somewhere. Won't come out in public no more. Won't let them. Let them take pictures. They put a picture of them on there about 20 years ago. Listen, the book says, the book says, you're made out of dust. Oh, Hitler thought he'd rule the world. He thought he's in power. All them millions of Germans, hi Hitler, hi Hitler. And they thought Hitler was the greatest thing ever next to God. But he's gone. He went back to the dust. Amen. Oh, Howard Hughes, the richest man in the world. And they said he was so rich that he's afraid somebody would get him and he had everybody sanitize his whole room all the time afraid to get a germ. And that, Well, he's gone. He's gone. Howard Hughes is gone. Oh, Hitler's gone. Amen. I'm telling you, brother. Oh, like I said a while ago, Elvis is gone. Einstein, the greatest, smartest, supposedly, man that ever lived. He made a great accomplishment and donated it to mankind, the atomic bomb. Well, that really helped us, didn't it? Uh, all them people like that. Old Jack LaLanne, 90-something years old, bodybuilder. He's 93, brother, still lifting weight. He's gone. He's gone. I, I mean, didn't old Merle Haggard die the other day? Did he die the other day? Did you tell me that he died? I can't remember. Somebody said he did. Oh, uh, some of y'all don't even remember him. I witnessed him one time at the airport out in Texas. And uh, some people like that, you know, they're here today and gone tomorrow. And you better remember me telling you people what the book says comes to pass. Let them mock. Let them make fun of us all they want to. They're going down. They're going down like everybody else. And science has done nothing to stop it. It said they're destroyed from morning to evening. You know what that means? Two per second. 150,000 people a day die in this world. Two per second. Now this is another message. You know how many people are born every second? Four. So we're adding two people to the planet every second, which means 150,000 people a day. There's 150,000 more people on this planet right now than there was this time yesterday. And there'll be 150,000 more tomorrow. They're heaping up toward 8 billion now. 8 billion people! But every one of them, gonna, not one, if one of them was still alive from 1400 and said, I'm still healthy and all that, we'd say, man, the Bible must not be right. Every one of them dies. 100%. They're all going. And I'm going to tell you something, all these smart alecks, they're out here laughing at the Bible. Old Bill Maher and all them on, on HBO and all them that are joking about the Word of God, they're going down. Worms going to eat them just like they do everybody else. They're going to the dust. They're going to the dust. They all rot and die. That's in there. They're all made out of clay. They're going to die in the morning and evening. And lastly, their house. They said their house. They die even without wisdom. Excellency in them go away. Their house rot and they die in ignorance. They never do get it right. That's a sermon from the spirit. Man, I'd hate to be laying in the bed one night and something passed before me. Now, I thought I'd seen stuff, but like it was a bird flew outside or something. I ain't never seen nothing supernatural. I know people that have. You know, she swears up and down. She's in my bed one night when she's about 
four years old, carrying, and she said, she swears up and down, something little come in my bedroom and was looking at her. Short, that same height. I was talking about them things a while ago. That's what, like, the munchkins and uh, the munchkins were demons, y'all. They molested Dorothy. Uh, for real. Uh, wicked little devils. And then they hung one of them out there in the field. Did y'all see that? I don't know about that, but I've heard everybody talk about it. But you, them things are wicked. And the people. You know what they call them in Ireland? The we people. I've been there. When I was in Ireland, they were saying, now the we people live under the bridge. And I said, who's the we people? W-E-E, -E, we, little, tiny. They said, trolls, same thing, trolls. Little short things that live. Man, if I was, I, I was laying in bed and a, a troll come in. <laughs> I'm telling you, brother, I'd, woo! I'd jump up and I'd say, I plead the blood. And that, that's what you do if anything like that ever happens. I plead the blood of Jesus. And if he starts telling you something that's against this, and you say, you going back to hell where you come from. You ain't no angel. Because an angel will preach it to you straight. Amen. That's sermon from spirit. Let's stand. Lord, we thank you so much. For this little study here tonight in the book of Job. Thank you for this little sermon we've talked about tonight. About we're all going to die and we're all going to face you. Help everybody here tonight watch over us. Lord, I pray that if there's one here tonight whose heart is not right in the sight of God. If there's a young person here that's been fooling around, doing something wrong. If there's a mom or a dad here that's got sin in their heart and just been sort of just loafing, not praying, not staying close to you. Get a hold of them, Lord. Have you in our hearts tonight. God, do what ought to be done in every life. We'll love you and thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, now listen. Uh, don't miss Wednesday night. Come praying. If you're not signed up for camp, get signed up tonight before you leave. If you're going to sponsor a kid, let me know. And let's, uh, don't, uh, don't forget now, on two weeks tonight, we're going to have a big parking lot service down here, right in front of the houses. We'll have chairs set up. and It'll be perfect weather, hopefully. And we'll just have a big time out there so you can invite your friends, okay? And maybe we'll have fireworks that night, too, okay? All right, God bless y'all. You can go. Thank you for being here tonight.